Hey, my name is Jason. I'm a registered sleep technologist, also the founder and moderator of freesleepadvice.com and freesleepadvice.com forward slash forum. Um, so I do a lot of uh, question answering on my forum and uh, something I notice a lot of is people are put on a pressure on an APAP machine, an automatic titrating CPAP machine is an APAP, put on an APAP machine with a pressure range of four to 20 or a pressure range of five to 20. Um, and they're left on this a lot of times. So um, what I basically say is, hey, this pressure is stupid. It's stupid, stupid. And so, you know, let me clarify that because it is stupid if it's done a certain way. And here is what I mean by that. Um, so something that's common, and even my business where I do home sleep testing, um, AXGSleepDiagnostics.com. We are the only ones that use EEG. Boop. One of the smart ways to do it is do a better diagnostic test and then titrating CPAP is actually a little bit easier. Now this is assuming you don't need BiPAP therapy or bi-level therapy or auto SV. But you know, no matter what road you choose, that's gonna be difficult anyway. So if we're just focusing on CPAP as a treatment, um, having people uh, do a home sleep test or just uh, an in-lab study, um, hopefully you use my, uh, Hopefully you're using my home sleep test, but if you do a home sleep test such as that and you can get a fairly good diagnosis of that, that's not a bad way to go, especially if you're considering cost in the, and obviously if the results are clear and accurate, it makes a big difference. Um, so if you're sent home with an APAP, that's not a bad thing because one, you have an APAP at home. This means the machine is capable of a range of pressures. It also means, it also means that the machine uh, is data capable, meaning you can use those free programs like Sleepyhead, uh, to, to pull out valuable information. If you don't know what Sleepyhead is, go to my channel, the Lanky Lefty 27, and uh, put in the search bar, Sleepyhead. You'll see some videos that come up and explains the program more. But you can see trends throughout the entire night of your leak values, your mass pressure, it'll tag events. You can zoom in on your actual airflow, really valuable data. Um, and if you have an APAP machine, all APAP machines are data capable. So that's a, that's a good thing. Um, so anyway, let's get back to the question. Why is four to 20 a crap pressure? Well, it isn't a crap pressure initially. If you do that for the first month, let's back up, let's go through the whole thing. You have a diagnostic study of whatever, and they say, yes, you have sleep apnea. Uh, the recommendation is we think they would do well with a CPAP titration. Well, again, for cost, if it is get you a machine or rent you a machine, that's gonna save a lot of money. And they have you wear the CPAP or the APAP for this period of about one month. During that time period, if it's set at a range of four to 20, it's gonna be going, you know, the nights are not gonna be perfect because maybe your ideal pressure is 10 or let's say 12 centimeters of water pressure. Well, if you start off, actually, let's do this. Uh, let's do this on my computer. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. So this will be, um, let's call it just like the wide open range. Well, oh, that's a crap line. So we have uh, potentially, four centimeters of water pressure to 20 centimeter H2O. Well, that sucks. And then here we have someone who is on like, um, well, we'll do that later. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna make little tag marks if there's an event, all right? So this is hour one through hour eight of sleep. <clears throat> so if you start off at four centimeters of water pressure, you start off here, most people aren't on four centimeters of water pressure, mostly because four centimeters of water pressure doesn't resolve sleep apnea. So what these auto paps do is they'll have um, algorithms where if you have a certain number of events, so pretend here you have an obstructive apnea, um, obstructive, then you have a, a mixed apnea or hypopnea, whatever. It sees us over a period of time and it's gonna increase the pressure. Then you're gonna have more stuff and it's gonna increase the pressure. Then you're gonna have more stuff. Now remember we said, for example, we're gonna be like 12, right? <clears throat> that's like your ideal pressure. And that's actually a pretty moderate range. That's a, a fairly normal range. It's not abnormal, it's not normal. It's just, well, it's not abnormal. <laughs> Way to buy it back there, buddy. Then you have a bunch more events over a, a slower period of time over here. And then it finally gets you up to 12 centimeters of water pressure. Well here, you're looking at maybe three hours of sleep. So three hours into it, you're having all these events right here. Where you are having a rough time. Um, and by rough time, I mean you're having sleep apnea. 
or hypopneas, and these are all waking you up. So over three hours of sleep, it takes you that long to finally kind of mellow out where you're actually breathing. And then say you have to use the restroom, so you take the mask off, you turn the machine off, you're in the restroom for you know a couple minutes. When you turn the machine back on, it's going to start off at four again, so now you're going through that whole process again of ramping up. Um, oftentimes it'll do a little faster than this, um, sometimes it won't. So here's our graph again. Um, you know, sometimes it'll take a little while, it'll go up a little faster, but it's still, you're still talking about 30 minutes or so. It's 30 minutes of sleep that you basically just missed out on. And if you take the mask off, that's an hour, an hour of sleep. And that sleep time is all wasted if you have a range of four to 20. So what happens after a month, this is what should happen, but this is often what does not happen. Usually a doctor will say, oh, they're doing, they haven't complained on four to 20, so let's just leave them there. And so you're left on this pressure long term and that is not good short term it's okay so what should happen is they either put you on a static pressure of say 12 or they put you on a range and they say you know and why would you need a range you'd want a range if you're having a hard time with just a static pressure but say um, they found that 12 works for you well they might start the pressure the range from 10 to 14 so in this case, you would start off at 10, and you would just, remember how you just had a few events? So over a couple hours, it might slowly get up there into that 12 range, and you'll be cruising the rest of the night. Well, in this case, you know, here's probably an hour or two hours. In this case, you probably only had slightly poor sleep, which really wasn't all that bad because you just had a few events. Um, you just kind of, you know, 15, 20 minutes weren't exactly optimal, and you're off and running. But this gives you the option if it goes up to 14, let's pretend you put on 20 pounds of weight over a long period of time. Instead of having to go into the doctor and have it you know, reassessed and the pressure changed, it's just gonna automatically go up a little bit more. So you're cool, you're covered. So why wouldn't you want it to go all the way up to 20? Aha, good question. So again, why is four to 20 a bad pressure? Four to 20? So your optimal pressure is here. What if they took off that four and they said, yeah, you know, if 14 is good, then 20 is better. Why is it not better? Okay, well, you do this thing where you go up a little bit here. What if you have a mouth, ma blah, 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 a mouth or a mask leak? What's going to happen then? Well, the machine's really, really, really stupid. If you're a mouth leaking or mask leaking, it doesn't know that. All it sees are little tags of where the it looks like the airflow ceased. And so it's gonna th see these mouth or mass leaks and think that they're actually events and thinks it's doing you a favor. Well, it's gonna increase even though the leak is increasing with it. And what's gonna happen is you get this runaway pressure where it caps out at 20. You have air blasting out your ears, mouth, nose, whatever, and your sleep absolutely sucks. Well, if it were capped off at 14 that would probably still happen but not quite as bad so that four or five to 20 range really it's not great long term for those reasons you can get runaway mouth leaks um, and you're basically just not on the right pressure you're, you're struggling to get up to that right pressure then you're okay and every night if you waste an hour or two every night it's a lot of sleep you're wasting and then you're asking you're coming to me asking why isn't my sleep why am i still tired on cpap or worse, you just give up on CPAP altogether even though it's actually helping you. Um, it's much better treatment-wise and psychologically and just for your quality of life to just be on the right pressure. Um, so APAPs are good because you do have those options and you have that flexibility, but they're bad in that sometimes doctors don't really understand that relationship and they just kind of put you on this big giant range and expect that it's going gonna, it's gonna to catch up to it breath to breath. Well, it doesn't do that. It takes a long time for it to kind of ramp up to that pressure that you need. Hopefully that answers your question. So short term, four or five to 20 is great uh, diagnostically. And that, what I mean by that is to figure out what your best pressure or best pressure range is. It's great for that for a month. Just, just consider it. Um, if you're on like a hypertension medication, you try five for a little while, five milligrams, it's not working. Then you take 10, not really working. Then you go to 15 and then all of a sudden it's working. You're doing the same thing with the pressure. So it's not horrible to do that. Um, but if you stay on it for like a year, or even two months or three months, not good. Um, so short-term, okay, long-term, not good. Static pressure or small range is, 
is all good. Hopefully this helps. Again, my name is Jason. Thanks. Bye.